I welcome the fact that the Minister has come in, albeit the fact that she had lost her seat in the election and wish her well in her future. There are serious concerns amongst self-employed owner managers of childcare facilities who have been forced onto the COVID-19 pandemic unemployment payments. While all their staff, all their staff are receiving the wage subsidy childcare scheme aimed at uh, retention of staff, and that is good. Uh, these owner managers are still working with parents, supporting the staff, and are carrying out huge levels of administration duties and are being uh, left on unemployment. Will the government look at this um, the cohort of managers, a very important cohort, who appear to have fallen through the cracks, Minister, and ensure that? Uh, Sure, that they too are put to the wage subsidy scheme. And, and what happens after June, uh, you know, in mid June? Can they, can they claim unemployment benefit for, for the summer months also? These people are vital. Many of them are owners and managers and put the seeds for those questions and built them up uh, and work alongside their staff and a very good staff. And we don't want to have the staff and them and them and us. No, we don't. It's a, a team, a very important team that grows around the love of caring for the children uh, and, and our request. Uh, there is a, a huge concerns about the capacity issues within the early childcare sector over, um, after COVID-19. While the wage subsidy childcare scheme is welcome for the retention and support of staff, there are huge concerns about the large um, loss of revenue that some, um, some service, uh, service, uh, services are facing, with many services uh, reporting losses of over €600 per week. It's huge concern about whether or not these services will be able to reopen. They cannot sustain those kind of losses. As it was, they were struggling. As it was, they had huge, huge rises, uh, quadrupling in rises of insurance, and some couldn't even get insurance, so we need to address that. At present, the sustainability fund is only available to COVID or not for profit services. Can this fund be extended to include all services to improve the chances of reopening September? It's very unfair. It's not a level playing field. They should be all. And lastly, on, on the wider childcare sector issues, and the consider, considering that all childcare facilities currently close with staff and um, staff pay directly via the wage subsidy childcare scheme and top up from the, from the Department of Children, this is an opportunity, Minister, I feel, to examine. Uh, to regenerate and reinvest in our childcare sector. It is ironic to think that you know, it takes a pandemic uh, and, and, uh, like this to, to uh, get to force a real root and branch review of what is going on in the, in, in the childcare uh, sector. It is huge, and I salute all the workers, and I salute the, the public and private uh, providers. Indeed, I was a founder member and a board member still of, of Nino and Koshna and Newa to the medium of Irish, and I know the work to do. But I also know the work, the huge onerous duties that uh, fall on the, the voluntary board members. And it's getting more onerous with regulations. And Deputy Nolan mentioned about Tuesday, yes, certainly. And there's need for that as well. But we are literally over-regulated in many areas. And there's no proper sustainable funding, uh, um, funding stream going forward. It's like, you know, live hard to get grass, and you're waiting and waiting and waiting. And there's huge pressures, too. In, 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 in rural areas and in all areas, but in rural areas as well. And we have people coming from 60 miles away to our crash. And it's a wonderful question to the foothills and knock me down to Newcastle. So, and I want to pay tribute to, to the voluntary boards, as I said, there and the staff and management. So, Minister, I noticed that there's a, a new model being proposed out there in the, your, your programme, you know, 2020 2025, or was outlined even before the election. The new models, we must reinvest in what we have and uh, look at the anomalies that are there and try and close them. And it's very important that he would. And I also want, Minister, and lip service has been painted over the years. It's been totally unfair and discrimination against the carers in the home, whether they be a mother or a father or whoever, and the grandparents, the huge efforts that they put in and support, and the wider family. But where uh, the, uh, one person says at home to mind their children, they must not be discriminated against. And we have discriminated against, against families in many areas across, uh, you know, across your department, Minister. And I have raised this with you before, and it's not acceptable. That, uh, we must, that it's not, um, you know, that, that we're making it not desirable for, um, for, 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 for parents to stay at home. There's no better place for the child to learn than the home. And that's been proven by studies all over the world. So, I, mean, I think this is a timely chance. Many blessings, I think, will come out of this, uh, this uh, sad pandemic as well. And, you know, people, we must insist that governments and family and departments and officials have due regard for the family as the, most, uh, uh, the best place 
to raise the children and not uh, have it uh, discriminated against, as we have had done by many of the schemes in the past, Minister. And I've had that um, debate with you across this floor, but nothing changed. So, we, and after the call of the Kayla, we support the primary, uh, the parents in the first instance, and indeed the, the local and voluntary creches and the public ones as well. So, does, um, please, I appreciate those answers. You don't have time here to see them, but I'd appreciate to get written replies to those questions, Moshe Dahal. And I think it's very important that we do. Good morning.